Well, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here with my colleague, Paul Fletcher, the Minister for Communications and the Arts. Well, we live in the age of digital disruption, and nowhere is this more apparent than in our media landscape. Dollars spent on print advertising has fallen by 75 per cent since 2005. In that same time, dollars spent on online advertising has increased eightfold. Conscious of these transformations and the impact it was having on our traditional media landscape, the then Treasurer, now Prime Minister, commissioned the ACCC back in 2017 to undertake a comprehensive world-leading review of the impact that digital platforms were having on competition in our advertising markets. That review found that there was an unequal bargaining position between the digital platforms and our traditional news businesses. That review also found that they were operating in a highly concentrated market, a market that today sees for every $100 of online advertising spend, $53 goes to Google, $28 goes to Facebook, and $19 goes to other participants. And as a result of this concentrated market, these digital platforms were unavoidable trading partners for traditional news media businesses. The recommendation of the ACCC was that the government put in place a bargaining code between the parties, a voluntary bargaining code. And the government accepted that recommendation and Paul, the Prime Minister and I announced that that was our policy position. But it soon became apparent that a voluntary code wouldn't cut it. That because of the unequal bargaining position between the traditional news media businesses and the digital platforms, that deals could not be struck that would see the digital platforms pay for original journalistic content. So the government earlier this year announced our intent to proceed with a mandatory bargaining code. And tomorrow I'll introduce into the parliament legislation that will give effect to that mandatory bargaining code a framework that will allow and enable commercial deals to be struck between the digital platforms and the media businesses outside the code. It's really important to understand that. Paul and I and the Prime Minister, we want deals to be struck between the parties outside of the code. Commercial negotiations that are conducted in good faith we want those deals to be struck outside of the code. And the word coming back to us is that there are deals that may be struck very soon between the parties. But if the digital platforms and the news media businesses are unable to reach a commercial agreement or unwilling to reach a commercial agreement, then a final offer arbitration model will take effect. And this final offer arbitration model will allow for what is called two-way value exchange. The money can only go one way. The money can only go from the digital platforms to the traditional news media businesses. But the arbiters need to take into account the benefits the traditional news media businesses get by having eyeballs on their product when they appear on Google or Facebook. 
The third thing that this legislative framework will do will set a series of minimum standards that the digital platforms have to adhere to. This is a huge reform. This is a huge reform. This is a world first. And the world is watching what happens here in Australia. But our legislation, which will be introduced in the parliament tomorrow and then go to a committee, a Senate committee, our legislation will help ensure that the rules of the digital world mirror the rules of the physical world. And that's been our intention all along, to ensure that the rules of the digital world mirror the rules of the physical world and ultimately to sustain our media landscape here in Australia. Paul. Well, thanks, Treasurer. It is vital to our democracy and to our society that we have a media with diverse voices so that there is coverage of current issues and events of public significance for Australians at a local, regional and national level. And indeed, that is part of the definition of covered news content in the code uh, that will be uh, introduced tomorrow. So this idea of coverage of events of significance to Australians uh, is central to the policy importance of the role of the media in our society and our democracy. And you need only look this year at the way that Australians have turned to trusted sources of news for information about the COVID pandemic. We've seen spikes in uh, visitation levels to websites, uh, viewership numbers across News Corp, Seven West Media, Nine Entertainment Limited, ABC, SBS, across uh, Australian news media businesses. Now, what this code is designed to do is to be an effective policy tool so that Australian news media businesses receive fair payment for their content that's used by the digital platforms and so in turn that they can continue to provide public interest journalism about things that are important to Australians. I'll conclude there. Thank you, Paul. Any questions? Uh, first of all, are, are the, which broadcasters are included? And um, secondly, what stops uh, someone, for example, the ABC recruit, undercutting the price of everyone else? Well, I'll let Paul add to this, but the ABC and SBS are included in this code, together with the commercial stations uh, and, of course, um, the, uh, the print uh, journal, uh, the print um, uh, uh, providers as well. Um, this is a code with a comprehensive application uh, and um, this is ultimately a commercial arbitration that will be sought between the parties uh, and if they can't reach a commercial arbitration then it goes, a uh, commercial negotiation, then it goes to a final offer arbitration. So just to uh, emphasise that point the Treasurer's made, uh, ABC and SBS uh, are included, that's to say they have the benefit of the remuneration provisions of the code, that's the position we've arrived at, uh, following consultation. And again, that's uh, uh, to give effect to the underlying policy intention uh, of this framework. Now, very importantly, the whole construct here is that individual news media businesses enter into agreements with the digital platforms. It's up to those parties to determine uh, the terms of that. There's some backup for that with the capacity for the digital platforms to provide, for example, a default offer. Um, there's a capacity for collective bargaining. Some of those measures are likely to be more significant for smaller news media businesses, regional newspapers and so on. 
uh, but certainly ABC and SBS included. And I should add that the ABC has given a commitment that uh, revenue that it earns under the code, it will uh, dedicate to increased regional journalism. We had threats earlier this year from Google that they would remove their news services from Australia. So how are you confident that they will actually play fair when it comes to negotiating with the media companies? Well, it's a mandatory code. So they're going to be required by law, subject to the passage through the parliament next year of this legislation, to abide by it. And in that respect, it is a world first. But I do want to emphasise that right throughout this process, um, Paul's department, my department, uh, have worked very closely with all the key stakeholders. There's been extensive consultation and discussion, including uh, draft codes, um, that have been shared uh, and worked through. And Paul and I this morning uh, spoke to the head of Google and we also um, spoke to the head of Facebook here to work through um, or to talk through uh, the announcement that we were making today. Uh, we also spoke to the heads of um, the TV stations and the major um, print um, journalistic companies as well. On the question of the ABC, uh, you've said that they've given certain commitments about how they'll use the money. Are you able uh, to give a commitment that you won't deduct that money from ABC future funding? Oh no, we certainly don't intend to do that. Um, obviously we'll work through ABC funding in the normal way when the, in advance for the next triennium, which uh, commences 1 July 2022. Uh, but this uh, commitment from uh, the ABC is about funding that they receive under the code, uh, should they receive remuneration under the code, that that would go to regional journalism, uh, and we certainly welcome that. But um, no, there's no intention on our part to in, in some way offset that, for example. Um, how much money do you anticipate will flow yearly from the digital giants to traditional media players? And secondly, is YouTube included in the final code? YouTube and Instagram are not. As Treasurer, um, I have the um, authority to designate a service that will be subject to this code. And I will be designating Facebook and Google. Google search and Facebook newsfeed. Um, the basis for that designation is the unequal bargaining position between the parties. And to make that designation, I take advice from the ACCC, from Treasury and others. And obviously that advice has come in the form of an 18 month inquiry um, that has found that to be the case. Treasury, given all the threats that Facebook and Google made, why did you make such concessions to these big tech giants? Well, we have reached a fair and a balanced outcome, and I think it would be um, remiss of you not to, uh, um, to, to remember how much um, Google and Facebook opposed this idea in, in the first place. I'm sure if they had their intention, there wouldn't be any legislation uh, before the parliament. Um, this is a world-leading reform, and I want to give credit to Rod Sims and his team at the ACCC for their research and for their report. Um, but Google and Facebook uh, didn't want to see this legislation come forward. We as a government have said it is a substantial reform and one we're committed to. Uh, hence, we're at this point where we'll be introducing legislation tomorrow, but the outcome is very much fair and balanced. Treasurer, have you, have you had any assurance in your conversations with Google and Facebook this morning that they won't carry out their threats to limit their service or more from Australia well, uh, in response to what you're putting up today? All I can say, and I'm sure Paul may want to add to this, is that in our conversation this morning, and no doubt in previous conversations as well Paul has had, um, they, they have been constructive, uh, and in fact they uh, praised the level of consultation that the government has undertaken um, through this process. I think the other point to make is that we have, as the Treasurer said, very carefully consulted. Uh, those companies, Google and Facebook, raised uh, issues that they thought uh, needed to be addressed in terms of the code that they had significant problems with. We considered those carefully. 
and we've responded on uh, many of the issues that they've raised. Issues like, for example, the period of notice of algorithm changes has changed from 28 to 14 days, and we've restricted it to uh, conscious changes to algorithms that would have a significant impact on ranking, rather than the continuous sort of machine learning progress of algorithm changes, which happens uh, continuously. So where they've made uh, fair points, we've responded. I might say we've also responded to fair points made by the news media businesses. So the code has uh, evolved. The version that will be introduced into the parliament tomorrow by the Treasurer uh, reflects the consultation with all parties. Um, and uh, uh, we believe it's an appropriate framework against which uh, commercial negotiations can occur between the platforms and Australian news media businesses. One of your own MP MPs, Anne Webster, had a terrible experience online uh, with somebody promulgating entirely false allegations against her. She had a defamation payout in her favour. She's told me that she's lobbying both of you uh, that the, uh, to basically come up with some legislation that the platforms be treated as publishers. Uh, Mindigo Treasury, you said that you wanted the rules of the digital world to mirror the rules of the real world. In the real world, uh, Facebook and Google and other platforms would be considered publishers. They publish a lot of content every day. So why not designate them as such? Well, Paul may want to add, but Anne, as I understand it, uh, won that case and, uh, and, and, um, and that was made clear by the court in their finding. Yeah, look, um, I think the point to make here is that the uh, the internet has made massive changes and that's raised uh, a series of policy challenges for government to respond. We're responding here on a significant policy challenge which is uh, how do we ensure fair commercial dealings between the digital platforms and Australian news media businesses and in turn um, uh, respect and promote the importance of a diverse Australian media with diverse voices. Now on the question of defamation there is separately a reform process being led by the State Attorneys General uh, with uh, Commonwealth Attorney General Christian Porter obviously involved as well but recognising defamation is a, is a, a matter of state law um, but so there is certainly a process underway to engage with the kind of issues that um, Anne is talking about. What she wants you to do is designate the, the platforms as publishers. That's that's related to this reform that you've handed well, out today. So is this, I just want to be clear, Minister, is this any, do you have any interest in doing this or looking at uh, it? It's certainly an important issue and that's why there is a process underway being led and by the State Attorneys General. It's quite, it's quite separate from what we're considering. John. Um, the two-way value of exchange that includes some revenue going towards the big tech giants for the referral traffic they give to the traditional media companies. Um, the the revenue, the payment out of this legislation only goes one way. I understand that. Yeah. It, it nets off against each other to, and it might lead to a bit of a discount compared to what the traditional media companies were hoping for. How will that calculation be done? Who will done it? And who will do it? Will it be the ACMA appointed panel? Will it be up to the companies to negotiate with that themselves? What if when it goes to arbitration? How will it be calculated? So the, the companies will obviously undertake their own research and put in their own submissions, which will be um, the foundation for their final office. And when the, the arbiters come to uh, addressing um, those final offers, there will be a chairperson and then there will be two others. So it's a panel up to three. I point out that if the parties can reach an agreement as to who the arbiters are themselves, then those arbiters can also um, make that decision. Um, but but the, the, the key point is um, that the information about that two-way value exchange and the value that you identify will be factored in, no doubt, to the offers that are put forward by the parties. Well, the arbiters have yeah, discretion in the, the arbitration process. Yeah. So it's important to understand the legislation sets out a series of factors. Yeah. Um, each company, if, if, if they proceed to an arbitration, the Australian news media business on the one hand, the uh, digital platform on the other, will put their proposals, having regard to those factors, the arbitrator will make a decision uh, between them. Um, but it's also important to make the point that there's strong incentives for parties to come to a commercial agreement before arbitration, and, and we expect that that may very well occur. Will the others have any discretion, or they'll just have to pick one of the two best bids from either party? There is uh, some discretion there um, if they feel that the offers are not in the public interest, um, but obviously they are, the final offers are the 
um, are the choice between um, the arbiters in the first instance. Treasurer, you've described the coronavirus as hitting the economy like a sledgehammer. The Prime Minister says it's hit it like a meteor. What's the necessity then in extending the cruise ship ban for another three months? Well, again, I understand that Greg Hunt will be standing up uh, later today to, to address those issues. Well, sorry, 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 can I just go back to the front of that? You haven't answered, you didn't answer my question. You didn't answer the question, Treasurer. What's the need in extending it? Well, again, um, in terms of the details, of those announcements and those issues will be will be made uh, by Greg Hunt, who I understand will be standing up with the Chief Medical Officer. Well, what's the economic impact of well, the, well, the, the, the economic impact, uh, obviously, of having any bans uh, is, is there for, for people to see, but I note that we're talking on a day that borders have been opening and some of those restrictions have been lifted. Yeah. There are concerns that the media code legislation will be too watered down. What are you going to do to ensure that media companies are adequately compensated for what they produce? Well, again, um, this is comprehensive legislation that has gone further than any um, comparable jurisdiction in the world. And what we've put in place is a final offer arbitration model that is fair and it's balanced. In the notion, in the in in the sense that it takes into account two-way value exchange. There's also the minimum standards that uh, Paul alluded to uh, about uh, algorithm changes and 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 other um, and other uh, information exchanges that take place under this code. This is the product of three years of work, and it is a very significant um, development, and it will ensure um, that our media landscape is more sustainable and more viable than it otherwise would have been. Sorry, last question Sorry. from... With the passage, passage of the Foreign Relations Bill, what's your message to Victoria about its Belt and Road Agreement with China? Well, we never agreed with it in the first place and we still don't agree with it. And, um, and no doubt um, decisions on that will be made in due course. Thank One you. You, you said before, should the ABC make revenue out of this? The ABC has to make money out of this, otherwise it's a big undercutting the rest. So what is stopping any broadcaster, publisher, whatever, from undercutting everyone else? And, to, in a, in a, Harry asked the question before, what, what sort of money are you talking about here? So can you give us a ballpark figure? Well, on, on that second one first, that's not really for the government to speculate on. The whole purpose here is to set up a process under which commercial negotiation occurs, having regard to the ACCC's advice that there's been a fundamental imbalance in bargaining power in an ordinary market there would be commercial negotiation between a business that is producing content and a business that is using content. What we're trying to do is uh, establish a regulatory framework under which commercial negotiations occur and um, it will be for the individual businesses to negotiate. We're not going to get into guiding them on their negotiation strategies. That is for commercial uh, and, and government employed media executives to do. Um, that's what they're good at. What we've done is set up a framework under which bargaining will occur, and we're confident it will. Thanks.